Hello, everybody. It's Mary Beth with sacredgrove.com and Dahlia from Hi, Crystal everyone. Yeah. This is Dahlia with Crystal Cognizance. <laughs> oh, we just did a little breath work to get us in the zone, wherever that zone happens to be. So um, yes. I'm hoping when you start to watch this, you go, what the heck is going on with these two? <laughs> yes, we're both glowing. The schwitzing is happening. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to talk about crystals for our animals. And I'm a crystal and stone lover from childhood. Uh, had my own collection when I was a kid. I have my own collection now. So um, Dahlia is from Crystal Cognizance. Uh, okay, so we're going to talk about your bio uh, real quick. So Okay. And I'm going to read it. And so we're just going to go th through it. Dahlia is the owner of Crystal Cognizance in Woodbridge, Virginia. And if you want her last name, it's Cordova. Cordova. It's my government last name. <laughs> her government last name. That's all it is. Is yeah. a multi-certified subtle energy healing facilitator. She has a background in psychology and crisis counseling. So Dahlia incorporates shamanic practices sound healing, Reiki, crystal healing, and divine guidance into this background I already told you about as she supports personal growth and self-healing, which she has done for me. Thank you very much. Oh, it's mutual. He loves partnering with individuals so they move forward in power and purpose. So Dahlia, I, I just reread your uh, about Dahlia page on your website. And so I, I would love you to just talk a little bit about um, who you were and who you are now uh, for all of us strange people who had odd things happen to them as kids, if I can say it that way. And for yeah. the rest of us to listen in and enjoy. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, and I'll keep it short and simple, because uh, we're here for you guys today. So I don't want to pontificate anything. But uh, growing up, I was definitely in that realm of the freaks and the geeks. I mean, uh, my mom used to say I would collect people, uh, collect stray people, because uh, you could usually find me, you could find me in every circle, um, but when people sort of gravitated towards me, it was, um, we had this shared commonality of not fitting in boxes. So I resonate, my people are the weirdos. I, I, it's one thing that I love learning about folks is, is just like, give me the strangest part of you and tell me how you got there. Um, so growing up, uh, I was, I'm an old soul, uh, so I, I was a little to myself, and uh, like I said, couldn't find my place, so what I did was uh, found my own place within and then, and then gravitated towards others. I always picked up stones and, and really found myself uh, entrenched in the things that I was interested in. Um, they really became a part of me. Uh, and, you know, doing everything from communing with animals to crocheting before 10. Like I was, <laughs> I was really like a little old lady and I was very strange. Um, but one thing that I knew from the get go and one thing that I programmed within my energy field was to make sure that whenever someone left my presence or my field, and I didn't really know much about energy as a kid, um, was that they feel better when um, when they leave better than when they came to me. I didn't I had no concept of what that meant. Um, but I it was something that I knew I wanted to facilitate. And so um, back then I had some concept of, of what healing looked like without the terminology. And now uh, I'm so glad that you read my healing facilitator part because I really, you know, if I have to say it quickly, I will tell somebody that I am a healer, but for me, it is a partnership with others or with animals, whatever that looks like. Um, my mission field does tend to be more human beings, but um, just as much as I 
become a part of the things that I'm, I involve myself in and that I enjoy. I involve myself in the people that I, I facilitate for, and I try to encourage people to involve and engross themselves. So as that pertains to animals and healing, it's the perfect connection. Um, my healing is heart-based and that's what I try to encourage people to do when they're going out and resolving for themselves. So from, from being a kid and just being like, I just want people to feel better to now um, actually having verbiage and formality to what I do, um, that's really the only difference. I'm still the same weirdo <laughs> with all with with random bouts of knowledge that you're just like, how do you know that? And and truthfully, I have no idea. <laughs> I love, love it. Yeah, we're we are fellow weirdos. Um, yes. It took me a lot longer to want to make sure people feel better or animals feel better if they've been in my presence. So I think you got me beat on the old soul. <laughs> <laughs> But, but I'm there now. So yeah, we all find it, right? In due time. I'm sure you had moments as a kid. As a Gemini, I know you definitely had moments as a kid. I love that mind. And um, so let's talk about crystals for healing because we, not we, I know and love crystals uh, for healing. Mm -hmm. And it comes very naturally to me. Uh, and we always think of it in the, most of us think of it in the people realm, but I'm thinking if we're drawn to crystals, how can we use them for our animals without being obnoxious to them? I don't know what else to say. It is like, you don't want to have a 20 pound uh, beautiful sapphire running around in your chihuahua or something. <laughs> but, um, but tell me, I, I guess where I'm starting, I'm looking at my notes here. What do you love about crystals and rocks for healing particularly? What do they bring to, to the healing session? Well, you know, um, everything and I, I live under the principles of the animus. So everything has a consciousness to it. I mean, from the chairs that we're sitting in all the way up to things that can actually communicate back with us with, with a language, right? So um, even though we have crystals that are, are immobile and, um, you know, for those of us sort of uh, just stepping into this, you may still use the word rocks and it's okay. <laughs> um, but what they bring is a perfect structure and vibration to the healing experience. So if you think about us as these mushy, gushy, you know, malleable, uh, easily changed beings, crystals are not that way. They are very fixed and hard to influence. It takes a great deal of pressure and atmospheric changes, heat, things like that to really um, alter a crystalline structure. The beautiful thing is we do have that structure within, within us as well. So what they bring to the table is a, a, is a literal grounding element to our healing needs. So let's say you're in um, the throes of anxiety right? Anxiety takes you right out of this present moment, throws you into the future of all the what ifs and, and what could be. Yeah. And so then you go and you reach for an amethyst whose perfect crystalline structure carries the vibration of iron. Iron is grounding, it's purifying, and it will bring you right back into your center. And so first you're holding an object. When we, when we apply force to a force being the holding piece to a still and solid object, a little bit of us comes back. Then you go on to work with, again, the vibration of the stone. And that begins to influence you and alter you in other ways. Now, if you are getting into crystal education, immediately your subconscious mind will kick in and say, oh, right, this is to help me with that. So now your subconscious mind is bringing you back further. And then if you were given that particular crystal, if it's not amethyst, if it's something else, if you were given that crystal with the intention of love from another person, that love brings you back a little bit more. So it's incremental changes and you can expect to be 
affected by these changes along with the pure structure of a crystal that is solid and still and it is your rock we talk about people being our rocks sometimes but you can actually work with rocks it's the subtle and incremental changes that over maybe a 15 to 20 minute period you can expect to see some difference now that's with people with animals it's much faster which is yeah. what makes them amazing <laughs> Well, I don't want to take a little diversion here because I, I had a, uh, a, a short discussion with my husband who I thought believed in a lot of stuff. And he says, he said, no, this is just placebo effect. You're making all this stuff about, you're making up stuff about this vibrations. And I thought, well, so here's Moldavite. Oh, Moldavite. <laughs> I have that in my ears. Oh, my God. Strong oh, stuff. Um, I'm a glutton for punishment. That's why. <laughs> it, I, I held this in my hand at the store and um, immediately got this heat that went up my arm. And I'm like, what the? And so then I learned later about multivite flush. And I thought, you can't have a placebo effect if nobody told you that this was going to be the reaction. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I don't know what people get. I, I do know that we are influenced by what we read, but there's always there's always the actual interaction that you that I guess I go back to. I, I don't know if you have any insight for us on. How oh, we, absolutely. I'm yeah. I'm all here for the the the. Please combat what I say because it means you're thinking critically. Yeah. So here's the thing. You know, one we are here to talk about animals and such too, right? So they're they don't have a placebo effect. So yeah. when you bring crystals to the table, you can see that the animals are influenced in that way. But as far as people are concerned, everything could be a placebo effect. The, again, bringing awareness back to how much of our reality we create, right? So if that is the case, if we are truly creating our reality, the chair that you're sitting in is a placebo effect because the atoms, atoms don't touch. So the atoms of the chair and the atoms of your butt are not touching, but in your mind, in the placebo, where the placebo effect is created, your mind is telling you you're touching that chair. You're influenced, you're being supported by that chair. So on the one hand, you're absolutely right to say, well, if I wasn't told, how am I having this experience? On the other hand, um, this is what I say to people, you know, for those of us who are afraid to feel, you are going to talk yourself out of every opportunity to do so. And crystals invite that almost immediately. So the, the repulsion of a crystal is a challenge. You know, I happen to be challenged by um, rose quartz sometimes, and, and it has to do with, um, uh, self-love because I can be my biggest critic. So when I see pink, I'm like, man, I'm not really into it. Well, wait a minute, pause. Let's talk about that a little more. And, and I could say, well, you know, in, in the book, it says unconditional love, but I could look also at the associations of just the color of the crystal and, and there's influence on that. So because our brain is in control, this is what this is this is why like I go to say that everything is a placebo effect because we are affected by everything you're affected by the glance that that person across the street gave you like why is their face looking at me like that. You're affected by how people say things you're affected by personal understandings everything is a placebo effect, there is a. Um, to the point of creating reality. And again, I wanna keep this short because I don't wanna take up the whole broadcast, but um, there was an experiment done with a couple of scientists and I believe they were gamma rays. And um, the, they were theorizing that these gamma rays could not move through aluminum foil. And I may be conflating a couple of details. So if you look up this um, experiment and it is, it is searchable, uh, if I have a couple of details off, I apologize. But uh, so these scientists get in a room, they set up the experiment, the aluminum foil shield, the gamma rays on the other side. And they were theorizing and observing that they believed that the gamma rays could not pass through the aluminum foil. So as they're staring and observing, this is taking you know, a period of time, 
nothing's happening. The gamma rays are not moving through that aluminum foil. So they go, okay, well, we'll come back tomorrow and continue to work with our project. So from there, they shut everything down, shut everything off, leave the room. When they came back the next day, the gamma rays were on the other side of the aluminum foil. <laughs> and all that they could surmise is that their influence of staring at the gamma rays and saying it can't move through that held those gamma rays in place. So that is, to, that is the one piece of us creating our reality and how science is catching up to be, measure, be able to measure um, our influence on this world, but also in the way of stones and crystals, we have measurable tools to look at the electromagnetic fields of us and them. And crystals are um, used in our everyday objects. The computers we're talking on right now have lab grown crystals in them to facilitate not only the screens, but the hardware and the information that passes through. And when you strike a crystal, electricity shoots off from it. If you go to crush a crystal, and, and so who's to say that you can't feel that electromagnetic pulse prior to influencing the crystal in another way? So um, if your husband is a man of science, there are measurable components out there for him to read through. I, I have a little bit of science in my background, but it's not my first love. So, um, you know, but I will say, um, for the most part, not a ding against him, but most people that say, oh, well, you're just kind of, it's placebo. Uh, one, what are you running from and what are you scared of? <laughs> and two, uh, placebos still work. <laughs> So and we're not hurting anybody. <laughs> I mean, if, and, and not to bring um, any other discussions into this, but even, even when, at the beginnings of the pandemic, when they were doing studies on drugs and things like that, and what would, what would support healing, it, if you go back and look at that information, there was a placebo measurement that I think was like 11% effective. So people who believed that they would get better from COVID, some did. So I don't know what to say about that. You know, mm -hmm. placebos work. They do. They do. It's um, yeah. I think it's a. It's not a bad thing. Not at all. Your mind influencing our our belief system, uh, influencing, can be in a good way. Okay. Thank you for that. <laughs> uh, my dog just went ah, like, what about us? Okay. So how there's a there's a number of things. Um, that I that we work on with animals and animals have emotions that need healing as well. So, you know, I gave you a list of things that I, I have dealt with with the animals. And I'm wondering if you can just share with us some of the crystals that you think, you know, might help different emotions that we see that our animal, animals are experiencing. Absolutely. And, okay. So, um, I loved this list because um, it's also a very human list. <laughs> So, so um, it, the, the treatment for things like separation anxiety, fear, aggression, sadness, um, stress due to vet visits, cloudy thinking, getting along with others in terms of like other animals in the home or, or what came to my mind was even people, right? Like when we start dating and new people come into our animals' lives, you know, there's a, there's a oh. trial period. <laughs> yes. Um, and, and I think arthritis was the last one just to kind of got, you know, go over those. Um, there are, there, those are very, also very human conditions. Yeah. And so I think one of the first things to highlight here is back to that heart centered piece. We are sharing with our beloved housemates. Um, so it is important to treat both. And you did highlight that, Mary Beth. Um, you talked about that in our conversations, just sort of working with both people and their pets. Uh, so let's sort of lay the groundwork that uh, whatever we do should be twofold for us and them, right? Um, we tend to uh, anthropomorphize our beloved babies and give them a lot of um, a lot of our stuff. Our animal partners, our familiars, our soulmates, our housemates 
um, they come into our lives and they come in as these pure beings and they are the purest empaths out there, if that makes any sense. So to define an empath for anybody who's not that deep into the woo-woo, right? Um, everybody feels empaths internalize and they absorb their environment. Now, the job of an empath is to, no, I shouldn't say job. I mean, you know, if you don't wanna do it, don't do it. <laughs> but what we are capable of is absorbing energy and then changing it, healing it, resolving it, doing something and then sending it back out. That's what's supposed to happen. But most of us stop at the absorption process and then we have problems. Well, this is the same thing for our beloved animal friends. So when I see something like separation anxiety, I start to ask questions about um, what goes into that. Now, animals are working in two ways. They're dealing with their own karma and karma is not to say that they're being punished. Karma is just energy that needs to be finished. So um, I do believe that our souls evolve and move through different consciousnesses for that evolutionary process. So could you have a pet that was once a human being? Absolutely. Um, but I think that uh, we had this discussion before, Mary Beth. I think that it, it works in the reverse. I think I think we're the bottom of the totem pole, and, and as I we evolve, we go into being animals and plants, and and then lastly, I believe we become crystals. But um, there's a deeper discussion on that that is not for this time. <laughs> so all of that is to say, your pets are maybe working through their own soul's lessons. When I see things like fear, aggression, separation anxiety, but they're also facilitating for the household. This is why in households that are in extreme turmoil, the animals deteriorate very quickly. Um, animals with chronic conditions, it may be worth looking at what's going on with the people in the house. Is your house on a ley line or near power lines or something environmental? Um, because we know that animals are sensitive to the environment with things like mold um, or, you know, other, other detrimental things, they'll be more sensitive than we are at first glance. Um, and then lastly, like, what is, what is this soul, what is this sentient being going through on a, at a karmic level? And, and is there anything that I can do to support that? So when it comes to crystals in particular, um, there are a lot of crystal options, especially like for separation anxiety, for instance. So we know anxiety is fear of what's to come, right? Mm -hmm. It is something that takes us out of the present moment, but something else to recognize about anxiety, it is not knowing what's going on around you, right? So uh, for an animal, animals tend to need concrete sets of um of ways of being right so if you think if they were in the wild there would be a certain set of principles that they would go by every day that tells them that this is okay or i'm in danger so in a household um a lot of those things aren't necessarily obvious so this is where your animals learn right they learn that when you go to that position on the couch and you sit a certain way this is what you may be feeling oh wait a minute, I smell tears because they do smell uh, the pheromones in our tears. Um, I need to lick your face because I need to help comfort you. If you notice like with dogs, they will lick each other's face faces to comfort each other. So there, there are principles that they operate by inherently and then they try to learn our human way of being as well and communicate with us from a heart-centered space. So this is where we're going back to that. You can, um, so crystals, to help facilitate that heart connection while also alleviating an ailment that your pet has um, might look like, um, I pulled up Mangano calcite here. It's one of my new friends. Um, it's hard to see mm. the color, it's pink. I don't know if you can you maybe see it against my white head, <laughs> head piece, but um, so Mangano calcite, that's M-A-N-G-A-N-O. Uh, is a beautiful and very soothing stone. 
Um, it helps dissolve conflict. It taps into that unconditional love, love piece in a way that I believe is deeper than rose quartz. Um, and it facilitates connection and understanding. So if you have that and you are having challenges with your pet and you wanna gain an understanding or let's say, I mean, let's face it, our pets have personalities too. Like I have a bird who's a real jerk sometimes, but I love her to death. And I love her because she's a jerk sometimes. Cause to me, it's, it's this uncorruptible spirit that she has, that she's just like, you know what? I'm a wild animal. Okay. Step off. This is my turn. <laughs> so I love her for that reason. Um, but in all actuality, if her and I are at odds, like it's, it's, she's, she's um, molting. So she's a little more testy. If I take my mangano calcite and I'm holding it in my hand and I have it somewhere near her cage, because obviously I don't want her to have direct access to it because I don't want her chewing on it. Um, I may be able to gain an understanding of what she's going through without my self projections of like, oh no, why don't you like me today? Because that's not what it is. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's yeah, really interesting because uh, it's touching on a lot of things that I do as an animal communicator. Um, the need to understand what the heck's going on, the mm -hmm. change in human routines, why do they do this, why, when are they coming back, um, the heart connections, which is where, you know, I do talk about starting with the heart as that's the best way to communicate, um, heart and throat. So, and understanding what their point of view is, which mm -hmm. just knowing that seems to dissolve conflict. Yep, it alleviates a lot of things. It, you don't take it as personally. No, you don't. And, they, and then they get like, oh my gosh, she hears me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Really, you know, it's, we know how I feel. Um, so, so yeah. there, are, there are particular crystals that we can reach for to continue these, this facilitation process. And if you, if you get mangano calcite and you're thinking, oh my gosh, this is pink, because when I bought it for the shop, um, I was like, why did I buy extra rose quartz? Oh, I must have forgot I had it. And then I took it out. One, it's extremely smooth. So this alone, just in your hands, you know, rubbing it and it's at, in its raw form, it is smooth. Oh my God, it's like butter. Um, it also fluoresces under black light. So if you're like, I don't know which one I have, mangano calcite will fluoresce. Um, but in any case, uh, when you go into use different crystals, so like for separation and gut anxiety, I would reach for mangano calcite, uh, maybe rose quartz, amethyst, um, fluorite, I'm trying to think. Um, there are also grounding crystals. So again, anxiety takes us out of the present moment. So you're looking at black and red stones, like your red jasper, um, your obsidian, your jet, your tourmaline. Um, you know, usually we see it in its raw form. Yep, there you go. Every empath must have. <laughs> um, and then uh, hematite might also be another one. So yeah. if, you, if you were to Google crystals for anxiety, you would get a lot of options. Um, I don't like to generalize when it comes to crystals. For me, it's such a personal experience that I wanna have a conversation. Where is this anxiety coming from? Because it is not the same for everybody. Right. So, so the anxiety is the symptom what you're experiencing is the problem. So from that standpoint, in the way of animals, if you take your mangano calcite or, or you simply just take a moment to hold them and be with them and to take all of your feelings and personalizations out of it and just say, I'm here for you. Um, and it's hard to do. Uh, and I'll tell you a story um, about just how hard it is in a minute. Um, but once you can retract and pull back some of those things, you get the lens of, let's say your separation anxiety is that your, your, your beloved animal soulmate was ripped away from their parents too soon. Well, That's now you have, 
you have a mother wound to address that you may not have. I mean, you, we, we talk about that in people, but it happens in animals too. And so their frame of reference is, oh my God, am I being taken away from somebody I love again? Versus, oh my God, you changed the routine in the house. What's going on? Do I need to be worried about it? versus, oh no, my owner is uncomfortable and there's nothing I can do to alleviate that. Those are three different anxious moments that are all dependent on different things that I would then bring different crystals to, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, my quick story, when I first got into healing work, um, I've always had animals. At one time I had seven, <laughs> I've drastically decreased. Um, <laughs> But I've been fortunate that two times I've had a uh, soulmate level animals. So my first was an African gray parrot. And when she passed, I was devastated. I really had the hardest time getting over it. Um, but her soul transferred to the dog that I have now. And my dog's name is Trixie. Uh, so uh, I was in a situation, I was married and uh, my husband really wasn't an animal person and with that's the most detail that you need to know about this particular story. So one day I was out and they both were home and my husband was cleaning the toilet. And I unfortunately had a toilet drinking dog. So what he did was he poured bleach in the toilet and let it soak and left the bathroom door open. So I came home and normally my baby runs up to me and she's like, mommy, you know, and it's, it's, I'm sure a lot of you can attest to that unconditional love that you receive when you come home. There's nothing like it. But she came out and she kind of sauntered out and she was very slow moving. And I immediately, I was like, no, something's wrong. And I was like, what's going on? And so I start looking around the house to see if she had gotten into anything. This wasn't my first dog. <laughs> and I went to the bathroom and I smelled bleach. And I said, did you leave this door open? And he was like, yeah. He was like, oh no, did she get in there? And so I lay her down on the bed and I had just learned um, this, Archangel Raphael to healing technique. Now, Archangel Raphael is a beautiful energy to bring to animals and plants. And um, in terms of giving color to healing, brown and green are what you want to use when you're working with animals. And you can pour those colors into crystals that you use as well. So let's say you're going to program your crystal to heal your pet. You get your crystal in your hands and you would go through the visualization process of pouring colors into the stone and it will be absorbed. You can do that for two minutes. You can do it for 10 minutes. If this is a panicked situation as it was for me and you do not have crystals on hand, you can still use those colors to support your pets with intention. So you may lay your hands on your pet. You don't need any attunements for this. And you start asking Archangel Raphael to come in and support healing for your pet. You know, please heal and resolve for their highest and best good. Because we want to make sure that in everything that we're doing, it is for their highest and best good. It is not the, the desire of, I need you, please don't leave. It's hard to get out of that space. But what would be for my highest and best good for the, pet, for, the, for the being that I love and I'm connecting with in this moment. So you put your hands down and this is what I did for Trixie. I put my hands on her and I went into everything. I prayed, I sent energy, I called Archangel Raphael. I was like, shish, boom, bah, I don't care what works, just make it happen. And sending those colors into her body because I had no concept of what was going on for her. Having drank bleach, I didn't know how much she had drank in combination with the toilet water, how diluted, whatever. Now, here is where crystal healing and, and supporting our beloved partners is important. I took her to the vet. I did not, Archangel Raphael was not working fast enough for me in that moment. <laughs> so I said, you know what? Just to be sure, just for peace of mind, there's no expense I would would remove from my baby just because I think that, you know, crystals work and energy works. I want verifiable proof that she is okay. So I took her to the vet. It was about a 15 minute drive. I'm on the phone with them. I'm like, I'm coming in. This is what happened. They said, come on in. I get there. <laughs> And she's, she's perking up a little bit, but you know, she also loves to be held. And that's all I'm doing is <laughs> carrying my baby around. 
And we get into the vet's office, they draw her blood um, and they leave the room and they're running all the tests. And she kind of perks up and she's like, okay. She looks at me and she's more present and um, not drooling as much and all these things. And she didn't vomit or anything. And she, they came back with the blood work and they're like, she's fine. Like there's literally nothing going on. There's no effects. Did she seizure? I was like, no. And she just looked at me like, hey, we had a fun car ride. <laughs> so, you know, $500 later, I had peace of mind. That is to say, you know, to your to your to your husband's point, we cannot placebo our ways out of a moment like that. Between the energy work, I didn't have crystals on hand, but I had enough belief and intention and love. I mean, if there was anything else that you guys take away from this, if you don't understand programming your crystals or pouring love, uh, pouring colors into them, use love and you will have an ability to have a beautiful impact on your pets, especially when it comes to separation anxiety. Um, and with that, uh, I would also use um, what I'm getting. So sometimes I get downloads, um, any crystals around communication for, for any challenges that you have with your pets. Um, so you're looking at blue stones like aquamarine or amazonite. Um, you may also want to pull in um, other kinds of communication stones like uh, petalite, P-E-T-I-L-I-T-E. -E. Um, there's a lot of, of beautiful communication stones that aren't obvious too, like pink tourmaline. We were talking about that a little bit before mm -hmm. the show. So, um, and if you'll notice, if you go to look those up, some of those, some of the crystals that we've mentioned also overlap as heart stones. So we go right back to that heart healing place. And, and I've had this discussion with other people before, uh, that's where telepathy takes place. So if you're in a, uh, a spiritual development program and you're like, yeah, I really wanna develop my telepathy, you need to come from down, from up here to down here. <laughs> Because it is not a third eye thing. Telepathy is a heart-based thing. And it's the, the coolest way to practice it is with your pets. Because they're is. so receptive. It is. It so. is. Thank you so much. This has been great. Um, wow. Luckily, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have uh, I'm gonna do a blog on this and I'm gonna and so people will be able to read read it. Um, and I, I may keep the whole transcript available. I'm talking out loud. So anyway, <laughs> there's going to be so much in here that I'm probably going to have a long version for everybody. But I, I sure. do need to know, for folks that might want to work with you, now you're in the Northern Virginia area. Uh, so not everybody can, can go to your shop and make an appointment. How else can they contact you? Um, thank you for that. Uh, yeah. So I have, I have good and bad boundaries around that. <laughs> so <laughs> any, um, I will say uh, the store's number is my cell phone. Uh, so texting and calling that are always options. Uh, but my good boundaries around that are, uh, I may not be able to answer immediately, but messages can be left. The fastest way to reach me is through text message. Um, the second fastest would be email. So that email is uh, crystalcognizance at gmail.com. Uh, just as it's spelled, no funny characters. Uh, crystalcognizance at gmail.com. You can also go to my webpage and there is a submission contact submission form right on the front page. So if you have any questions, you can reach me there at crystalcognizance.com. Mm -hmm. um, and then as far as my services are concerned, we are going and rolling through updates and different things. I'm gonna have a lot more virtual options. If you don't see something that I that you are in need of that you think I might be able to help you with, the cool thing is I trust spirit in that moment. If I cannot help you, I'm trusting that you came to me so that I could connect you with somebody. Um, so uh, it is a rare occasion that I say, I have no idea who I could send you to. Um, and what you will always get from me is the level of which I 
I understand how that person can help you. So if it is that I am just aware of this person operating and having these services, I will say that. If I have had services and can attest to how I felt with that person, I will give you that. Um, because I think we're a community. You know, I love sending people to Mary Beth because while I have my shamanic background that easily fits in with animals, this is her deal. Like I, <laughs> mine is secondary. Mary Beth is primary. I am happy to pass that torch. And so, um, you know, if you do feel like reaching out to me, I'm, I'm here and available through crystalcognizance.com. Um, my cell phone is on the website and Googleable, and my email as well at crystalcognizance at gmail.com. Okay. So well, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, and, and not to interrupt, but before we close out, Yep. Um, I did not talk about uh, ways that folks can safely use crystals with their pets. So um, with regard to crystals, here's one that is very dangerous to use with your pets. This is malachite. Really? It's very alluring. It's very beautiful. It feels amazing. It, what makes malachite green is copper. So once you wear away that beautiful shiny coating that, that drew you in, you are exposed to a lot of high levels of copper. And so with regard to crystals and animals, here are some safety tips. Okay. Um, you can always use glass. So glass is a great, um, it's, it's very permeable in terms of energy and not necessarily permeable in terms of the stones themselves. So you could take something like this or a cup and set it in water and still have the water receive the energy from the stones. So you don't have direct contact on something that's dangerous. Hematite would be another one you don't wanna put in direct water that you intend to ingest. So to support our, our beloved animal babies, if you want to give them crystal healing or crystal energy, you can place the stones on them, but not wet. Um, or you can put them, like I said, in a glass something and put that glass something in a bowl of water um, and then give them the water without the stones, please, without the stones. <laughs> um, I have seen people try to be very decorative with collars and things like that. Just be aware that if, if the hot glue comes off and they start gnawing on the crystals and they will, I mean, they love, they love this energy. <laughs> so they will chew on it. Um, then you're, you're in a different situation and setup. So um, to me, the best way is um, direct contact that is monitored like you're not leaving them alone in the room with the stones, but you maybe have them laying down. Um, so direct contact with the stones, putting them in a bowl, putting water around that, taking the water, uh, taking them out and giving the water to your pets. You can create sprays that way as well. Um, and those are really your safest options. If you do put crystals yeah. on, Oh, did I disappear for a minute? Yeah, yeah. and and I want to ask you um, before I forget. You, you're talking about putting them in the water, and that's when it got it stopped. Uh, okay. How do you do that? Okay. So that? in order to have crystal water for your babies, that's called crystal elixir. And um, I did have some book recommendations. This is one of them. Um, so the Crystal Bible, this book is as old as, as I have been, um, like this particular book. I've had it since I started my crystal journey. In the index, what you'll find is ways to use the crystals in different ways. And she talks about crystal elixirs. Okay. So that's what it means to take your crystals and, and create a water that is energized and empowered by those crystals. Okay. So what you're gonna do is you're going to take the stones with regard to animals, especially using dangerous crystals like malachite, you're going to put them in glass. So either small glass bowl that is not exposed to the water or a cup. And you're going to set that in the water. I probably do shallow water that doesn't go anywhere over the rim. And you're gonna let it charge for six to 12 hours. Mm -hmm. 
Then you're going to take the crystals out and you can let your pet ingest that water separately. You can also create a spray. And um, Mary Beth knows some things about essential oils. So if you're gonna do a spray, there's probably some safe essential oils that you can add to that crystal water. Yeah. Um, but all of this allows your pet to receive crystal energy through water. Okay. Does that make sense? So we ran off a list of crystals that you can do that with. Yeah. And then, of course you can always like, you know, on fur, lay, whoop, it didn't hit the floor. <laughs> you can always lay the stones, you know, on them but you wanna make sure that you're monitoring them because animals love crystals just as much as we do and they will chew on them. So those are, those are safe ways to use them. I've seen people get decorative with collars and things, you know, like hot gluing stones to collars. Just be aware that your pet may scratch them off and then you've got to find the stone before they do. So. Yeah you know, be as safe as possible is, is the main thing. Thank you so much. You're welcome. That's great information. So I hope people do this. Uh, if, if you're, if you're a crystal lover already, uh, let, let's explore animals and see, let me know how that works. Do it safely. And thank you, Dahlia, so much for your time. I appreciate yes, it. Yes, absolutely. All right. Thank you for having me. Bye everyone. Bye.